Argentina had been treating us very well and we'd seen and done so many wonderful things since arriving in Buenos Aires, but our time was winding down before heading off to our next destination. BA is one of my favourite cities in the world and a big reason for that is the incredible cuisine. There is so much on offer when it comes to food and drink that it meant our stomachs were never empty. One of the country's obsessions is dulce de leche, and I'd describe it as tasting a lot like milky caramel, if that makes sense. It is prepared by slowly heating sweetened milk to create a substance that gets its flavour from the reaction caused by the heat, whilst also changing colour. Many souvenir shops sell the confection and also offer tasters. I also got some on a freshly made crepe, which was so, so nice. One of the first places we stopped off at for food was this Perea, just off to one side of San Telmo Market, tucked down an alleyway. Perea is Spanish for grill, and in Argentina, the world's meat-eating capital, they go big on cooking and have various meats to choose from. This was just a quick snack pit stop, so we decided on a spicy sausage hot dog and loaded it up with a hearty helping of chimichurri. This was also the Perea where we got the crepe, and they also had a bar, so if you fancy stopping off for a drink, you could do just that. Speaking of drink, Argentina is no stranger to a fine selection of alcohol. If you're heading to Buenos Aires and you like your beer, then you won't be disappointed with local brew Kilmes, which is sold pretty much everywhere and often in these big bottles, which is perfect for sharing. But quite possibly the nation's most famous liquid export is its red wine. I'm not a massive fan of still wine, but I did try a glass and Gab really liked it, so it's definitely worth a try. She especially liked the sangria, which we got at this beautiful restaurant called Boca de Toro. The food and staff are great in here. Just look at the potatoes bravas. The food is that good in Buenos Aires that even the not as impressive dishes served in touristy areas are still pretty great. When we visited Caminito, the street of colourful houses frequented by visitors, we went to a restaurant that was a tourist trap as they had traditional tango dancers on stage to lure people in, as well as a fairly simple menu. I got the basic bitch order of cheeseburger and fries and, although not a fancy dish, the burger patty was legit meat and was so nice. Even the cheap stuff in Argentina is unreal. On one of the evenings, we decided to go to Don Julio, one of BA's top eateries and ranked number 34 by the world's 50 best restaurants. However, when we arrived, it was busy and we had to put our name on a waiting list and it will take about three hours to get us seated. In the meantime, we went bar hopping for drinks and small bites in the nearby Palermo neighbourhood. This is one of my favourite places to visit in Buenos Aires and it comes to life at night, giving off a real atmospheric buzz. We indulged on different things, including another traditional Argentine dish, empanadas, as we passed the time waiting for our name to come up at Don Julio's. Eventually, we got our table and ordered what is the best steak I have ever had. Oh my god, it was insanely good. It's such a beautiful place and isn't pretentious like a restaurant of this calibre usually is, and that's just a testament to its staff. There was plenty more that we consumed in the city, but eventually it was time to head back to the airport. We'd flown with Norwegian to Aziza International Airport, but this time we were flying out from the smaller Jorge Newbury Aero Park. Originally, we were going to fly straight from BA to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, but that turned out to be really expensive and it was much cheaper to fly to Iguazu Falls, cross the border by land, spend a couple of days there, then head on to Rio with a flight from the Brazilian side. Two domestic flights seem to work out a hell of a lot cheaper than one direct, plus we get to explore one of South America's natural wonders. However, there was the small matter of getting there and we booked our flight to Iguazu with LATAM. They're a big airline that predominantly serves Latin America and I was intrigued to see what flying with them would be like. But when we turned up to the airport in the early hours of the morning for our flight, there were no staff on the check-in desks and along with hundreds of other passengers, we were stranded. There were no LATAM or airport staff on hand to let us know what was going on and people even began to clap for attention as we were growing restless and being ignored. Various television crews then began to turn up, and it seemed as though something big was going down. As it turned out, LATAM Argentina staff decided to go on strike, with no notice given to passengers, and the airport offered no help with the situation. Fortunately, I was able to purchase tickets to Iguazu with the Aerolinas Argentinas from my phone. Ironically, the airport had great Wi-Fi, and we'd fly a few hours later. It was a wasted day for us unfortunately, but we eventually arrived at our destination and took a taxi from the airport on the Argentinian side to our hotel in the town of Foz do Iguaçu in Brazil. To see what we got up to in this part of the world, subscribe to my channel so you get your notification when that one goes live. As per, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.